Thank you and good evening all to this wonderful session. Uh, taking this session beyond sulfonylurea, somewhere near SGLT2 inhibitors. So the next 15 to 20 minutes, uh, I'll not try convincing using dapagliflozin or SGLT2 inhibitors as first line, but definitely I'll tell you the pros and cons of this medicine. So as we all know, with the advent of uh, FDA guidance, in 2008, with the cardiovascular outcome trials, we have found that with the advent of, SG, uh, with the advent of cardiovascular outcome trials, uh, SGLT2 inhibitors and GLP-1 analogs have taken upfront in the management of diabetes. And in over last two days, we might have had multiple brainstorming sessions on this. I'll give you a quick review. And now the question is, uh, should SGLT2 inhibitors be the first line of therapy for type 2 diabetes? So what does the experts across the globe say? So we have one comment over here. Question is why not? Why this drug should not be used as first line agents? We know there is no risk of hypoglycemia. They are insulin independent. There is no risk of weight gain. And they will work as long as you have kidney. So this was an excellent comment which I got. Again, there are multiple articles that SGLT2 inhibitors as first-line therapy for type 2 diabetes and why not, again, they should be used as first-line. Uh, there was a small study in which they found that initiating SGLT2 inhibitors can less likely, the patients will have less likely a cardiologist visit. So as we have seen in various cardiovascular outcome trials, the hospitalization for heart failure and cardiovascular death has reduced with the usage of this SGLT2 inhibitors. The visit to cardiologist can be reduced. So now the question is how many of us are using SGLT2 inhibitors as first line agent for treatment of type 2 diabetes? So as of now, metformin is the sole contender for this position, and it has been changing over the last two decades. We have been seeing guidelines. We have been seeing multiple studies that this is being changing over a period of time. Uh, along with metformin, other drugs in the armatrium have its own problems, like thiazolid ions have adverse effects. So they are prevented from being used as first line. Alpha-glucosidase inhibitor, DPP-4 inhibitors have modest decrease in glucose-lowering capacity. Sulfonylureas have their own issues. It has been discussed extensively. And GLP-1 analogs are costly till date. So now to our molecule, SGLT2 inhibitors have several beneficial effects in terms of three major things. One is diabetes prevention. Second is cardiac protection. And third is renal protection. This we'll be seeing in future slides. So we have n number of trials now which are showing cardiovascular benefits. All cardiovascular outcome trials have confirmed the class effect of SGLT2 inhibitors and they have shown significant reduction in composite of cardiovascular mortality, hospitalization for heart failure and in patients with type 2 diabetes and established cardiovascular disease. So in all these parameters, it has been found that the benefits start as early as four to eight weeks of initiation of these drugs. So there are early cardiovascular benefits in terms of all the aspects, hospitalization for heart failure, heart failure, uh, hospitalization for heart failure and cardiovascular death, cardiovascular death individually and all cause mortality. And it has been found that number needed to treat is somewhere around 10 to 14. So if we are treating 14 to 15 patients, with SGLT2 inhibitors, we are preventing one episode. Uh, coming to heart failure per se, the heart failure approach is being shifted, shifted again towards SGLT2 inhibitors. They are beneficial in patients who are already on beta blocker, mineralocorticoid receptor agonist, and ERNI. So we have a 5-4-3 approach. Five ways, we have five pathways, four drugs, and three additional drugs. So SGLT2 inhibitors have gained its importance in terms of heart failure, hospitalization, and cardiovascular death reduction. Now, how exactly is this heart failure hospitalization prevented? And how exactly patient is having this cardiovascular and renal benefits? So this slide shows it excellently. SGLT2 inhibitors are causing sodium excretion along with glucose. 
So it will have its intrarenal effects and intravascular effects. Intrarenal effects by acting on tubuloglomerular feedback and intraglomerular hypertension, leading to renal protection. And by intravascular effect, it will improve your endothelial dysfunction and arterial stiffness. These are at molecular level, which will help in reducing heart failure and cardiovascular protection. Uh, this is again excellent slide summarizing all the beneficial effects of HGLD2 inhibitors. It acts as four major aspects. One, I'll start with endocrine. Endocrine aspects, it will cause increase in beta cell function, it will cause increase in glucagon, and it will cause decrease in sympathetic tone. Hemodynamic effects, it will cause osmotic diuresis, natriuresis, fluid overload reduction, and endothelial function improvement. And the classical cardiovascular risk factors like blood pressure, weight, glucose, uric acid, and albuminuria is reduced by this agent. And to have myocardial effects, it decreases oxidative stress and inflammation. So this will summarize how exactly HGLT2 inhibitors are having cardiovascular and renal benefits. Uh, second aspect is nephroprotection. Nephroprotection is a class effect for HGLT2 inhibitors. And in various trials, including Credence, DAPA, CKD, it has shown that HGLT2 inhibitors decreases the outcome, renal outcome in terms of end stage renal disease, doubling of serum creatinine, or death from renal or cardiovascular disease. Uh, thirdly, it has been started, studied in, started studying in NFLD. So HGLT2 inhibitors is causing various parameters to reduce, which will cause decrease in NASH and NAFLD. So non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is, as we all know, it is commonly seen in type 2 diabetes and also in Asian Indian population. So this molecule is going to help in reduction of the complications due to NASH and NAFLD. So this is the armentrium where HGLD2 inhibitor is going to work. Spectrum of glycemic control, spectrum of cardiovascular disease and spectrum of kidney disease. Now what do guidelines say? Uh, as we have seen that can it be used as a first line agent? Now European guidelines of cardiology society recommend HGLT2 inhibitor as first line therapy. In patients who are having atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease or very high cardiovascular risk, HGLT2 inhibitors or GLP-1 analogs can be used above metformin in these patients. Again, ADA has suggested that HGLD2 inhibitors with or without metformin in patients with type 2 diabetes and high risk of atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, heart failure and chronic kidney disease would be the treatment of choice. So, we have seen this throughout the day. ADA 22 has recommended usage of HGLT2 inhibitors or GLP-1 analog irrespective of HbA1c level just immediately after metformin in patients who are having atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. So this is again a European update which has suggested that HGLD2 inhibitor and GLP-1 analogs are going to help you out. Now again, KIDGO guidelines recommend HGLD2 inhibitors as first line therapy along with metformin in type 2 diabetes and chronic kidney disease. So this is in a combination metformin in patients who are having GFR of more than 30, HGLD2 inhibitors and metformin can be used as a first line for prevention of chronic kidney disease progression. So now coming to the other aspect of the coin, uh, HGLT2 inhibitors as first line might be more relevant for Asian Indian population. We all know Indians are thin, they have more abdominal fat, they are having high insulin resistance, they are having characteristic dyslipidemia, and all this is leading to cardiometabolic complications. So HGLT2 inhibitors is going to target all these cardiometabolic complications and seem to be ideal for Indian population. So again, HGLD2 inhibitors in the same circle, they may mitigate all the complications related to kidney and heart. So what are the other reasons why HGLD2 inhibitors should be used as first line? We have seen cardiovascular, renal and benefits in terms of NAFLD and NASH. Uh, the effects of HGLT2 inhibitors start immediately. There is no need of dose titration. 
they act insulin depend independent so there is no risk of hypoglycemia there is no risk of weight gain and they work for everyone as long as you have kidney so coming to the other aspect of the coin we have seen the good part of hgld2 inhibitors yes the risk of dk is real in type 2 diabetes i like to present one case for this there was a 55 year old male who presented with type 2 diabetes and underwent cabg for triple vessel disease and his last dose of dapagliflozin was 24 hours before surgery so within few hours post surgery patient landed in diabetic ketoacidosis with ph of 7.25 now what exactly led to diabetic ketoacidosis was major cardiovascular surgery and prolonged, factor, prolonged fasting were the likely precipitants of euglycemic DK in this patient. He was managed well with IV fluids and insulin. And from this, we, we, if you see the AAC guidelines, it is recommended to discontinue HGLD2 inhibitors at least 24 hours before an elective surgery. And considering the half-life of 12 to 16 hours, effect may persist beyond 24 hours. So persistent glycosuria, if a patient is undergoing surgery with normal glycemia and patient is having glycosuria, it indicates that the action of HGLD2 inhibitor is still intact and can lead to diabetic ketoacidosis. So learning point from this is HGLD2 inhibitor should be stopped during an acute illness and at least 48 hours, even though guidelines recommend 24 hours before a major surgery, it should be stopped at least 48 hours before a planned surgery, although the risk of diabetic ketoacidosis is very minimal and there has to be a precipitant factor to present with diabetic ketoacidosis. And coming to other risk associated with HGLD2 inhibitors usage, genitourinary infections as we all know, risk of amputation and fractures have been seen in few trials but it has been discarded as of now. There is high risk of volume depletion due to diuresis and also leading to acute kidney injury. However, this is transient. If patient is having reduction in GFR of more than 30%, then we need to reassess the patient for other causes of acute kidney injury. And considering the benefits, definitely benefits outweigh the risk as compared to the, uh, ben definitely the benefits outweigh the risk considering all the cardiovascular and renal benefits associated with HGLD2 inhibitors usage. So optimal prescribing of HGLD2 inhibitors require a full understanding of the risk in addition to their benefits. And uh, the, our ultimate goal would be to exploit the cardiovascular and renal benefits of HGLD2 inhibitors while avoiding its major, cardio major adverse events. So again, I was not trying you to convince to use HGLD2 inhibitors as first line agent, but yes, HGLD2 inhibitors have got, got its various benefits in terms of cardiovascular, renal and NAFLD. And these agents have the potential to become the first line. Probably in next few years, we'll be seeing the guidelines that using of HGLD2 inhibitors would be at its first set in treatment of type 2 diabetes. Thank you for the patient listening. And I would like to thank USVN organizing committee for giving me this opportunity.